So last week we start discussing about how to determine a load and a low Q. So in that discussion, uh, I explained there are two methods to calculate or determine a load and a low Q. The first method is using 10 independent blank samples. There's another method. You can calculate a load and a low Q also using the calibration graph. So using calibration graph, sometimes uh, much easier compared to a low D and a low Q. The reason is uh, if you have difficulty of uh, getting a measurable signal for your blank samples, uh, then you might be able to use a um, low D, low Q calculation based on the calibration graph. Now to discuss this, I have a dummy set of dummy results the this ppm column just the concentration and the response column is the response now let's first look at how to draw a calibration graph so you select this data you go to insert you go to charts and you can get the calibration graph now i have seen many students uh, when they're drawing calibration graph they do some mistakes first mistake is leaving the title here now or a figure you know that in scientific writing the title or the figure caption should go below the figure so it should be included separately so the first thing I do is I will uh, remove this but before that I need this uh, some other options uh, for example I need slope and the correlation of this graph so I got that one and I'm removing this it's not really necessary than 0.99 usually it's a good calibration graph now if you want to calculate a low d and a low q you need to calculate the standard deviation of these data points not that standard deviation in the lecture i will explain this in little more detail but i'm going to upload a document that you might be able to read after downloading now this is a document now what we need to calculate is we need to calculate the standard deviation of the responses so that's an easy way to do this using excel so we're going to do that but we'll discuss what this standard deviation of the graph late the second part you need is slope of the calibration curve so how you calculate uh, the first one standard deviation we are using ste by x function and the slope function to calculate these two parameters so let's go to excel and calculate these two functions the first one is the standard deviation next one we are calculating that using the function which is given by excel so i go to this more function and the more function statistics you can scroll down and you can get this uh, need to select the data first y axis data then x axis uh, data i think i did a mistake here so first uh, let's do it again the x axis data the concentration slope you can take the slope or you can get the slope using this uh, graph but you can calculate just it using uh, the given inbuilt function so let's go to slope so here's the slope function 
so when i go to slope function first i need y axis to be fixed like so and then x axis to be fixed like so so at least i do have these two values but I'll, before i move on i'll show you something else if you want to understand what is this uh, function we are using see this is the function so when you bring your cursor here you will get uh, some kind of a description about this function you can read it or you can google it and see what this function is all about so let's do the calculation first we'll do LOD calculation now LOD is LOD is uh, 3.3 times the standard deviation of the graph divided by the slope. So we'll calculate that. Equal 3.3 uh, asterisk in bracket. We have the standard deviation divided by the slope. So that's why that is the LOD of. Uh, if you calculate LOD using uh, this calibration graph, so that is 0.7932. So that's why you can calculate LOQ. Now for LOQ, the equation is 10 times the standard deviation of the graph divided by the slope. So let's do that also. Uh, if x times y times both values now based on this graph um, LOD and LOQ is calculated to get the best results you must have your graph extended as far as down you can go in the concentration but make sure when you have smaller concentrations uh, you might need to really careful when you draw in the calibration graph so I'll introduce uh, how to draw a calibration graph again uh, in a later video when you have uh, so much, uh, so many concentrations uh, towards the lower side as well as towards the upper side. So I hope you understood how to calculate uh, LOD and LOQ using this video.